So this off season is going to be busy, busy, busy. And we need it to be busy for the Yankees. So let's talk about it. All right, so playoff baseball is here. It starts tomorrow. And we got three American League East teams in the postseason. Okay, the Blue Jays, the Orioles, and the Rays. And I expect all three teams to be aggressive this offseason too. And the Blue Jays are going to lose some guys. Maybe the Rays need to make tweaks. The Orioles are going to want to make, you know, create a gap between them and the rest of the team to continue their momentum. And – I expect the Red Sox, who have some upstart players, to spend. They've got money to spend. I don't think they're going to sit idle, which is which means it tells me that the Yankees need to be aggressive. Okay, they were aggressive before 2003, when after they lost the World Series to the Marlins, they brought in Sheffield, they raw, they were aggressive in 2008 offseason when they brought in CC and Burnett and Teixeira and Swisher and and Damaso Marte. Like they were a little bit more um, calculated in that regard. That offseason, they won the World Series 2009. We need the Yankees to be aggressive right now as their fans, okay? And to me, I'll be high meaning there. I need them to be smart too and calculated, okay? If they do both, then I think they can have a very, very uh, – just a, 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 an extraordinary offseason, okay? Because the fact is the American League East teams are going to be busy. We need the Yankees to be busy, okay? You know, they got the, the – last year they got the high-ticket guy. Carlos Rodon, but they didn't get the left fielder. And when they got Garrett Cole, they didn't really get much else. So, like, they've done this before. They get the high-ticket guy. And high-ticket guy in free agency, this is probably going to be, well, Otani or, or Bellinger. Um, but they have multiple holes to fill. Okay, and we'll get to that, too. Multiple holes to fill. And pitching, I've said this, pitching does not address hitting. Hitting does not address pitching. They need to address both this offseason. And, and when we're getting signs um, that – they're going to be aggressive. We're also getting some skepticism from guys like Jack Curry and some other beat writers that the Yankees may not go for the big fish. But you never know. You never know. So I didn't think the Yankees were going to be knocking on uh, CeCe's door at the stroke of midnight when Freeze started. But that's what Cashman did. He was at his door in his house and he knocked on his door. So um, you never know. So, but I will keep you updated on every single move the Yankees make, every move in free agency. This offseason as well, with the signings, the contracts, winter meetings, the signing award, and everything else too. So if you haven't done that yet, hit that subscribe button, please, um, to make sure that you're in the loop on everything. And if you do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification too. That way you know exactly when the videos comes out. come out. I thank you for it. It means the world. I want to make sure you don't miss anything, especially if you're a diehard Yankee fan. Now, how can the Yankees do this? Okay, this is my take on it. I want to know what you think, so load up the comments. Number one, you know, Shinobi Yamamoto, 25-year-old right-handed pitcher. He's considered the best pitcher to ever come out of Japan. Career about a 170 ERA, throwing new, two no-hitters this year. He's projected to be better than Tanaka, Roki Kuroda, um, Mai Tuzaka, and the rest of these guys out of Japan. Okay? Young, dynamic hitter. I mean, pitcher, 25 years old with a big repertoire and the ability to get guys out on a regular basis. He was a stud in the World Baseball Classic, too. Now, I expect the Mets to be involved, so expect a bidding war. So I don't see a scenario, personally, where it's going to cost less than a six-year deal at at least $25 million a year. So and if that's the case, it may go up to seven or eight years. This guy's 25 years old. The Yankees have to be um, put themselves in the running. Okay, They do. They have to put themselves in the running. Even if they give him an opt-out after five years to let him get back on the market at 30 to secure another big contract, they'd be successful. So be it. I'll take five prime years of Yamamoto to go along with some of the other guys. And we've talked about the Yankees needing potentially two pitchers, right? It could be Yamamoto. And even if they move up King or Schmidt, there's a chance that one of those guys, like a Schmidt or something, like, might be traded in soft season two for hitting. So it's just something to keep in mind, which is why we're bringing another guy. Now we got Blake Snell and Aaron Nola, the two big fish in free agency, but they're both 30, okay? And they're both going to be very expensive, 25 to $30 million a year. So I'm proposing Jordan Montgomery. He's familiar with the Yankees, familiar with the AL. He's had success in AL and AL, even if they traded him. I don't know if he has the appetite to come back here, but if they gave him a four or five year deal at 15 to $20 million a year, it might entice him to come back here. And it'll be a hell of a lot cheaper than Snell. 
and Nola. I would like Nola. Nola's my first pick, but if we can't, we get Jordan Montgomery. And there's some logic behind this, so just so, so, so stay with me, guys and gals, okay? So those are the two pitchers I would be targeting, Yamamoto and Jordan Montgomery this offseason. Now, let's pivot to hitting, okay? They need to lift the leadoff hitter. And Judge said this, too. They need contact bats. They need lefty contact bats. Well, Jung Ho Lee from South Korea represents just that. Okay, he could be the Yankees' version of the Red Sox Yoshida or our version of Ichiro Suzuki. He puts the ball in play. He strikes out very little. He gets on base on a regular basis. He's a good outfielder, good contact hitter. Okay, what an accurate arm. He's got all the tools, and he addresses a lot of holes that the Yankee need, Yankees need. And we need a prototypical leadoff hitter. Listen, I was last year, I was hoping they got Brian Reynolds. They didn't do it. This guy would represent a great fan. He's, he's barely 25 years old. So, and he's not going to cost as much as a. Cody Bellinger and free agents there, some of these other guys. So it's just something to keep in mind, okay? And if they got him, man, you could be in a better position, okay? You could even start him at center, and you can pivot him over to the left once Jason Dominguez shows that he's healthy and can come back. Now, talking about trades, the Yankees could potentially trade Glaber Torres for pitching, whether it's a starter. And if they do trade for a starter, I would imagine they're going to have to add a pitcher, because the Marlins would need a pitcher if they trade with the Marlins or the Cardinals, right, or whatever. Um, you can add a Johnny Brita or a Randy Vasquez or even a Clark Schmidt, depending on who the player you're targeting. But this is a guy, Jamer Candelario, if they do move Torres for pitching, let's just say they move them for a closer, David Bednar, let's say, for the Pirates, okay, as an example. And they can move Oswald Peraza to second base. They played him in the last game of the season because they wanted to see what it was like. He's an elite defender. And you can get a guy like Jamer Candelaria for third base. You could probably get him on a two- or three-year deal. And the fact is, too, his contract's not going to be as expensive as Glaber Torres' contract is going to be when he's a free agent after next year. He's probably going to cost them about $20 million a year, Glaber Torres. You could probably get Candelaria for 10 or 12 for two or three years. And if you replace Glaber Torres with Oswald Peraza at second, you brought in a Candelaria, you just got better. You replaced his offense, first of all, okay? And you've gotten a hell of a lot better defensively in the infield at second and third while Volpe continues to develop at short. So he's another guy. You're looking at he's a switch hitter. He's another contact bat, puts the ball in play, and again, doesn't strike out a ton either. So those are the two guys. And the prize here is Juan Soto. He's the only guy I would trade a Hall of Prospects for. I wouldn't trade the whole farm because we won't need to with one year of soda, but we trade a chunk of it. And this is a this is a situation, in my opinion, where the, the Padres in, infield is pretty stacked already with Manny Machado at third, Xander Bogarts at short, Cronenworth at second. Like, So there's a good chance they may not need to trade a guy like uh, Peraza. They may ask for Spencer Jones or Jason Dominguez. They were willing to part with one of those guys. Okay. Or maybe you can try to entice them with a Brandon Maia and the Neverson Pereira. Give them two infielders, I mean outfielders, on the cheap to help them facilitate their payroll cut that they're mandating for themselves. They're getting cheap, controllable outfielders. And then you can offer two pitchers, like a Will Warren, let's just say Chase Hampton. You just gave them four prospects on the cheap, okay? All of which I think are in the top 30 for the Yankees, okay? To replace one guy, Juan Soto, who well, they're probably not going to re-sign because of his price. Now, the Yankees would have to obviously do that. He's going to cost a lot. But let's just say they got a handful of guys here. Let's just say they get Soto and Yamamoto and, and, and somehow Candelario. The Yankees filled in the gaps otherwise. Okay. It's going to cost them a bit, but the Yankees have a boatload of money coming off the books. But I want you to, I want to point out something here. I didn't mention Cody Bellinger for a reason. Okay. He'll be the top three, one of the top three region outfielders, no doubt about it. He's probably going to run $200 million plus. He's the only player of this list. We got two, two guys from overseas here, right? Yamamoto and Lee. And then you got two guys that were acquired at the trade deadline, Montgomery and Candelario. And then Juan Soto will be a trade. Not one of these guys comes with a qualifying offer. When the Yankees signed Carlos Rodon last year, they had to forfeit their second and fifth round pick and a million dollars in international signing money because he was attached to a qualifying offer. But they, they'll have to do the same thing with uh, Cody Bellinger. And the fact is... We have prospects that are probably not going to get an opportunity here. So you would trade him for a generational player like Soto, who is clearly better than and younger than Cody Bellinger. Period. Okay? He's better. He's an on-base percentage machine. He puts the ball in play. He hits with power. It's in the clutch. And he's significantly younger. Okay? Yes, he'll cost more. No doubt about it. But, again, 
It's not like you're spending on Otani, who's going to be on the wrong side of 30, coming off Tommy John surgery. Soto plays an average of about 150 games a year. He's healthy, he's productive, and he's young. Okay? And if you were able to somehow get him, and even if you didn't, <coughs> let's just say the Yankees got Lee and <coughs> brought in somebody like Kevin Kiermaier on a one-year deal from the Blue Jays. Took him away from an AL East rival. It's in a clutch, too. He's an elite defender, and let's say you get him on a one-year deal somehow while Jason Dominguez gets healthy again. You just got better defensively in the outfield as well, and you got better with the contact hitting. You could put a guy like Kiermaier at fourth after Judge, and you can even move Rizzo to fifth and Stanton to sixth, something like that. So, But Soto's the big prize. And again, being able to be aggressive and smart at the same time is something I think he's haven't done in a while. This gives them an opportunity to do that. <clears throat> But I want to know what you think. What are the comments? Can you see this happening? I can see something like this happening in the version. Not the whole entire thing. I mean, I would be freaking nuts if they did. They've had off seasons like this before, like 2009. But it really depends on what Hal's appetite to spend and willing to be bold and aggressive is. We'll see what that is. But have a great week, everybody. Let's talk about this. See you all next time.